All right, so I'm going to bring on Keisha to introduce our next guest. Hey, girl. Uh, you're muted. Am I still there muted? We go. Oh, I yep. must have clipped it. Of course. I always do that right at the beginning of the show. It's like a Keisha thing now. Um, so hi, guys. I am Keisha Acuff of Acuff Creations. I am also a co-host on Cryptid Crunch, and I am here to introduce our next guest, which I am super excited about, um, Kim Rose. So um, are we bringing her up, or am I just giving you guys a little play-by? Um, yep, I'm going to bring her up. We're also going to bring up Doug Hubler. Oh, who is yes. Interviewee. I'm going to drop myself out and okay. I'll bring both of them up and let you say hello and give you the introductions. Okay, so uh, hi, Doug. Hi, hi. How are you? I'm it's good. Nice you? seeing you again. Ah, <laughs> I am good. With the same background. I mean, uh, if I could ever <laughs> learn how to put the chroma key to work. Like on what? What's the other one? Uh, never mind. <laughs> it's okay. I, as you can see, I live in the darkness, so <laughs> that's what you guys get. Welcome to the dark side. Yes. So, are you excited to have Kim on? I am amazingly honored and and excited. I've I have been a huge supernatural fan for the whole fifteen years. So yes, I am. I am thrilled to be able to talk to Miss Kim Rhodes. So you know, the funny part is, oh, Akisha's a vampire. That, <laughs> yeah. is, that yeah. might be a true statement. So the funny <laughs> thing is, the how I fell in love with Kim is actually through the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, because yeah. yeah. that was the show that was on when I was growing up. I'm about the same age as uh, they were, and so I always just I loved having um being able to see her and then uh I think she's been on uh let me see uh oh, I think she did a Monk, Criminal House. Minds and CIS uh, House yeah. yeah uh I think she was on Switched at Birth <laughs> Kim I made think. the show so sweet <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Uh, are we going to bring her up real quick? Or... Ah, and oh, there yeah. she is. I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 It's always so awkward to hear people talking about me and like be able to see my face. And I'm like, what is my face doing? <laughs> What's my face supposed to be doing? I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I always have a face thing going on. Um, every show that I ever do, like... I have people that screenshot my face and I'm making like, <laughs> so it's beautiful. I love it. Um, so I just wanted to say hi, uh, cause I am a huge fan. Um, and I got to meet Brenda song a few years ago. So this is like, I get to, I get to meet two people from a show that I loved from my youth. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you that there is not a one that you would meet and be like, oh, never meet your heroes. Every single heart on that show oh. is exquisite. Brenda, are I met her in, uh, where was it? I met her in Pittsburgh at a car show. <clears throat> and she was one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, legitimately, just they're all really, really kind, lovely. I, it just, I, I was so, so, so grateful to have um, that collection of angels to work with on that show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I, I actually messaged you on Instagram last night because I, I said that I was going to be introducing you today. Um, but I was looking through your videos and you have a murder going on on your roof sort don't you? of. okay uh, first of all, <laughs> i don't know how to get my messages on instagram i know oh, they're open and i know people leave me messages i don't i am that is okay nope i have i have run <laughs> screaming away from all social media so i'm just like i don't, I don't know how to turn it off so i'm sorry i don't judge you um okay. but yes <laughs> uh, um, I, I wanted to bring up your murder I don't have a murder. It turns out I have an, I have an unkindness. 
Uh, I thought I was, I thought when, when the pandemic hit and I was, I was stuck inside, I was like, I, everybody else takes on a pandemic project. I need a pandemic project. And, and I decided my pandemic project was to be um, uh, queen of my murder. And so I started leaving food on the roof and letting them come. In. And then finally, when I got up close to the, the big bird that would let me to get, the big bird was really fucking big. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it that the really, one really that big. always comes up right behind your head? Yeah, this is the one that comes up. Who that- also, I don't have this on video yet, but it's now actually taking food out of my hand. <gasps> yes, because I saw that it was getting food. closer. I have achieved food. I, it, she doesn't like it when my hand's open, but if my hand is closed, she will take food off of my hand. Um, and I call her she because I think because she was feeding the baby last year, uh, she, or there was a baby, and this particular is it turns out a raven. So I do have a murder. There is there are about twenty crows. Ravens and <laughs> and crows don't generally um, mingle, but these two these two breeds of birds will get together when they're both picking on a hawk. So I've, I've seen that <laughs> lovely where the, where, the, where the murder will corner the hawk and then the ravens come and like figure out which twig the hawk is stick is sitting on and shake it until the hawk flies away and the crows can come bombard it. It's quite wow. interesting. I've had wow. a lot of time interesting. I've had a lot of time to myself. But yes, that's the, that's the extended dance remix version of you made the mistake of talking about my Corvids and I will talk about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. I am a bird person. I have like 70 chickens and 11 ducks and I, I live on a farm in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and so birds are my thing. And when you walk into my barn, there's so many like different types of birds that just like took up home in my barn and I'm like as long as you don't you know mess with my chickens and ducks you're good you can stay here but the uh, but the corvids the corvids will take care of the mice uh I need I need all of them then cuz the I have so I have, many mice. You need I have had, to, had to I've actually cuz I work at a barn and um and it's it's it it's very awkward to explain to a child why that thing in the crow's beak still has a tail that's doing this and i'm like nature is cruel my darling nature is cruel oh, no. <laughs> yeah it is i've seen some so we had a a hawk in our barn last year and i've seen some cruel nature going on before right? uh, so <laughs> yep yep, birds yep. Are still great that. they're, they're just creepy great. <laughs> it's just i can't I, I have learned that there is there is Whoa, we're going down, we're going down the tunnel. I feel it happening and I can't stop it. I know I'm not supposed Oops. to go down the tunnel, but here we go. It's um, my fault. <laughs> no, 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 it's my brain's fault. And, and what I want to say is that I think it is a human defensive mechanism to moralize behavior because I want to know that it is possible to be good. And therefore, if I am good, I will be rewarded and safe. And the fact is, stuff just happens. Shit is shit. Nature is nature. There is no morality because there's no intention to animals and how they behave. It just, it just is. And so when I watch it, I'm having feelings, but I'm having feelings about me. I'm not actually, I'm having feelings because I relate to the bunny that is no longer going to get to live the rest of its innocent little fluffy life because it's, you know, been grabbed by a talent. It's not I've seen it happen. Bad. I have bunnies yeah. and it's not great, especially when you're so excited. Your bunny just had a bunch of babies. And then all of a sudden you go from three babies to two bunnies and you're like, well, <laughs> man. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm, yes. life is harsh, but I mean, that's just the reality of it. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Hi, speaking of nature, are you going to come up? You 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 heard that people were actually watching me now. And yeah, we, we're going to have an appearance by the cat at some point. Okay. But yeah. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Sorry. We just, yeah, we just Doug, if you want to no, take me out. All right, I'm... Birds I'm... are cool. They have wings. <laughs> That is true. Doug, if you want to kick me out, you can. I know I was just here for the introduction. Well, um, no, no, you're more than welcome to stay, huh? Okay. I'm, um, I'm happy to have you here. And I'm thrilled way, to I... be able to talk to you, Kim. That's, I, I mean, we're, we're definitely 
obviously going to be talking supernatural an awful lot. I'm sure a lot of questions will come in. I'm and, ready. And my birthday's in March. I turned 70. So I was totally out of the sweet life aspect of your I career. Was I, just, I, I was the wrong demographic. But I can say that I fell in love immediately and permanently with Ensign Lindsay Ballard. Oh, wasn't she amazing? That and, and in both fun. personas, uh, Lindsay and what was it, Jet Leia, Jet something Laya. like that? Jet Leia. Yeah. But that yeah. was uh, that that episode of Star Trek Voyager. In case some of you didn't know, uh, starred Kim. And when uh, I first saw you on Supernatural in season five, I kept looking. I'm going. I know that face from somewhere. I, 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 I'm, and then your first encounter with Sam, Dean, and Bobby on the phone. And I heard that, I'm going to call your crap out voice. And I thought, <laughs> Ensign and Captain, Ensign and Janeway, that was, I, now I know. Now, now I am DB'd it just in case. Okay, yeah, yeah. That was me. <laughs> That was me. That was me. And that was, can you want me to tell you a story about that scene? Please, please. Um, yes. So uh, uh, it was, now I need to tell the story without, uh, um, a lot of times people respond in insecurity uh, and I never want to fault them years later. So, so there was, there were a lot of people trying to impress Kate Mulgrew. And in that scene, I felt very strongly that 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 ensign was challenging her was basically oh, yeah. like you red shirted me she's calling yeah. out for every red shirt ever in the history right. of Star Trek, and looking at the captain and being like what the fuck <laughs> um and uh and there was a, a, another person whose job it was to make decisions about these kind of thing who was like no no no, no, no that's not right that's not no we don't because uh you don't confront the captain. You don't make the star look bad on the mm. show. So that kind of antagonism is sometimes disrespectful to the actor to come in and basically uh. affront them with your views when you're not mm -hmm. the star. So I was shut down with that, but we were about an hour behind time. And as we're having this discussion, I hear from the back, the door slams and I hear, what's the holdup? My child has chicken pox and I should have been out of here an hour ago. And everybody's like, oh, fuck. And, comes up, and we hadn't met. She introduces herself. And the person says, well, we're having a problem because Kim thinks the scene should go this way. And we all think the scene should go that way. And I was like. <laughs> Under the bus. The bus, the bus, the bus. And she looks at me. And she goes, well, she's obviously right. We'll show you both ways so you can see that she's right. Come on, honey. <laughs> you do a great Kate Mulgrew. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. And she then, because I'd never done single camera before, right? I'd never done, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd only done a soap opera and sitcoms where there's three cameras and they find you. I'd never had one. And so she sits me down and she is a one woman acting class. She shows me the difference between setting a prop down on your words so you fuck sound up and setting the prop down in between your words so you can just keep right on going. She shows you how to, she, she was the specifics that you find out through making mistakes. She wouldn't let, she, she was like, come on, babe, you got this. And she was so incredible that I wrote my last day, I wrote her a fan letter and I left oh. it on her trailer. <laughs> because she made, like, I used to think, I mean, I'm, I'm old, but I still have the fantasy of one day winning, like, a big, a big award and being able to I think you her. still could. Honestly. And have her be like, who the fuck is Kim Rhodes? And be like, and I'd love to thank Kate Mulgrew for my career. <laughs> And she's still involved in the franchise. She started doing voiceover work for a uh, CGI animated Star Trek. So she's she's still Janeway. She's so she's just she is. I mean, talk about meet your heroes. She 
was and meeting her just made her more yeah yeah and you were and you were the only opportunity harry kim had for any kind of a happy ending. Well, there, there might have been a happy ending. I don't know. You know, it's you know, behind the camera. I'm still in touch with Garrett. When we see each other at, at fan conventions, it's it's like it's just he's scrumptious. He was so the, the contact lenses that my character wore, um, I was nearly blind in. So he would like it is he he would wait to make sure that I got to like it's a very it's kind of a labyrinth. Oh, yeah. Set. And so he would he would make sure that I was moving where I needed to move, and he was make sure and and the 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 costume is so difficult to get into and out of that they were kind of like we'd rather we, you didn't get out of it and eat that sounds hard <laughs> for everyone so he made sure I got food and he made sure like, oh wow he was so kind and it wasn't like at a certain point as as a human in this industry you learn when people are being kind to get something right. and when people are being kind to be kind. And he was so kind. To Genuinely be kind. kind is yeah. the nicest. Yeah. And never got promoted. I Poor know. Guy. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, you, you mentioned conventions. Yes. Uh, the supernatural be, before the pandemic, pre pandemic, I heard a, a little boy, a very, very young boy, call it the pandemic. So that's what I've been calling it ever since the pandemic. But prior to the <laughs> pandemic, uh, supernatural conventions, conventions built specifically around the show, mm -hmm. were very popular and very well uh, attended. Since the pandemic, not so much. No, we're Do, coming back. We've got one oh, this coming you? weekend in Dallas. Oh. Oh, wow. I can't make it to Dallas. Oh man, I'm <laughs> jealous though. Yeah, it's it's the, um, the the company that puts on the supernatural specific websites is Creation. Uh, right. They also do the Star Trek conventions, um, well, and so their their website the will, yeah they, their website <laughs> will will indicate what is back because last year we postponed for everyone's safety. And so this year we still have a lot of safety measures in place. It isn't everything it used to be yet, but we are back, we are connecting, we have photo ops, we have uh, autograph opportunities. And um, and those are, those are back concerts. up and running. Huh? <laughs> and the concerts. And the, co yes, the concerts. I mean, yeah. do I really have to go to my nephew's birthday party? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. There, I mean, we have a whole year <laughs> of them, so you can find one that fits oh, your true. Schedule. Right, right. Yeah. Any well, near I'm... Illinois? <laughs> Chicago. I think we have a Chicago. I don't know. I would have to look it up. The fans, yeah. the fans can, the fans can do it. But um, yeah. But fans. Yeah. <laughs> let the fans, let the fans know, <laughs> and um, they'll tell you if we have a Chicago this year. I think we do. I'm in East Tennessee, so the closest you have, you guys have come, has Nashville. been Nashville, which is yep. a four-hour drive. But, but it's Nashville. It's hard to drive in Nashville. Is it? We fortunately don't have to don't have to drive in Nashville. Right. We were just in. Was I just in Nashville? I don't know. They all blend together. All I see are airports <laughs> and hotels and convention halls and airports and hotels. If you're like, you get to travel so much. I'm like, I don't. You could could have fooled me. Yep, I can. We, we have a. <laughs> we have a question from Kristen saying, what was it like to work with the twins? It, it, it was really <laughs> fun. It's hard. No, I'm sorry, because my brain is literal. And so every time I get a what was it like question, my brain immediately is like, let's create a, a, someone asked for a metaphor. And you're not asking for a metaphor. You're asking for, in general, what was my experience? Experience and did I enjoy it? I think is what you're asking. And yes, um, Dylan and Cole, I used to I used to joke. I was like, everybody's got a devil on their shoulder and an angel on their shoulder. And with Dylan and Cole, they each had a devil on their shoulder and an angel on their shoulder, and then a twin in their ear picking a side. <laughs> so um, they were so smart. Like few people realize that they had to go to school at the same time as they were shooting this. So their work ethic and their commitment to their job. I, here, I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story that really indicates who they are. So when we first started, Phil Lewis, who was the other adult on the show, 
uh, said to me, he was like, okay, we have to be the bowling bumpers for the show because we're the grownups. And, um, and kids like playing. And we had a crew mm -hmm. that was fun to play with. And so at one point, you know, early on, Phil and I were like, guys, look, here's the thing, guys, to the, to the two boys, here's the thing. You will never get fired, even <laughs> if something is your fault, because you are not expendable. It is our job to take the bullet for our crew. Now, these are 12-year-old boys you're saying this to. 12-year-old yeah. boys oh, no. are not known for being like, well behaved. Yeah. I have a 12 year old son. Yeah. 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 My 12 year old is crazy. So, <laughs> so you would, every single time one of them would open their mouth and be like, nope, that was on me. That was on me. I'm sorry. I'm back. Uh. No, that was, if you have it to the point where they would say, <clears throat> if you have a problem with what just happened, talk to me. That level of courage and commitment and willingness to take a bullet for your crew, there are grown ass human beings that still won't do that. Right, because right. They're too scared to get in trouble. True. So their willingness to be top of the call sheet was so lovely. And on top of that, they were fun and funny and just magical. I love them. I love who they've turned into, and I loved them back then. Oh, that's you, so sweet. You had appearances in other, I mean, so many shows besides the soap opera. You did, I believe you did Monk. Mm -mm. You did, you did I didn't Monk? do Monk. No, it's easy to get confused. I did a show called, oh God, now it's gone out of my head. It was, however, with Tony Shalhoub ah. and Neil Patrick Harris. Mad, stark, raving mad. Ah. Is that right? Help me. Somebody uh, know this. I am um, Googling they're, it. They're, <laughs> I'm, not, I, I'm familiar with the title. I'm not familiar with the yeah, show. It was a sitcom. Um, right. Monk came after this. Right. Uh, 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 so, but yes, I was, I did get to do, I've done, I've done a lot of, for a long time, I was really a go-to for crazy guest star of the week. Um <laughs> I was never hot enough to be hot guest star of the week, but I was hot enough to be hot, crazy, funny guest star of the week. Wow. So I did a lot of um, uh, 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 the, the wacky agent or the wacky ex-girlfriend or the wacky whatever the wackiness is to the point where I remember auditioning for a show called Titus. And there were five of us because sometimes when they've got a short period of time, the casting director will just pull in people they know can do it. And there were five of us. And I was going into the room number three and the casting director came out and it was a pretty extreme over the top uh, uh, scene. And the casting director came out to us and she said, all right, here's the thing. Um, this is a really extreme character. I want you to just go for it. They really want to see you go for it. And the first person goes into the room comes out and leaves and the casting director comes out again and says, all right, I can't make this more clear. Um, really, really go for this. Just, just like, let it, let it rip. Um, otherwise this isn't going to work. The person goes in and comes out and what, and she comes out again, the casting director, she goes, all right, listen, <laughs> whoever you think is too much, Go even further than that, except for you, Kim. You just do what you do, and you're going to be fine. <laughs> I feel like that's I, what they do to me I on this show. Well. Oh, yeah. They just, they're like, everybody, bigger, more. <laughs> but except for you. Could you just try to try to? Yeah, yeah. I, I was on a show the other day on our network, and I was like, I, I asked the boss man after I was done. I was like, do, do you need me to tone it down a little bit? And he goes, no, the reason I have you on there is because whatever crazy this is. So we actually have a new shirt that has hashtag Keisha be crazy because apparently that's, that's my persona now. It's just so, all yeah. my life, all my life. You're too much. You're too much. You're too much. Wow. You're a lot. You're a lot. You're a lot. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. I am. Right. You can't, you, you just can't, it's like, you can't keep it in a bottle. It's got to go somewhere. 
You explode if you try to keep it in, and it just <laughs> you get cramps. I mean, it's you know, it's messy. It's messy. It's messy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You've worked with some of my favorite entertainers, talking about Tony Shalhoub. Uh, he was lovely too. I remember I tried to keep it together, but at one point, I um I did say because his his movie Big Night is mm -hmm. one of my favorite movies. It just is right in my heart. And uh, and I told him, I just said, I, I, I want to tell you what that movie meant to me. And right now, as I'm saying these words, I'm afraid I'm going to cry. And That's all right. Went, oh, he said. I cry at card tricks. It's okay. Don't Go he, ahead. <laughs> he said, don't cry. Don't cry. And he just put his arms around me. And like, well, you know, when somebody hugs you when you're about to cry. He's like, you're going to cry. It's well, inevitable. Yeah. Don't cry. But he was just, oh, scrumptious. Who else? Oh. Tell me who else you want to know about uh hugh laurie did you you worked with hugh laurie on house for a for a hot second <laughs> um okay so my so my story about that house episode <laughs> 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 so it was coming off of sweet life it was one of the first things i'd done since i'd had a baby and hugh laurie was lovely um now when you are hugh laurie on house and when you are playing guest number two at a dinner, there is a, there is a clear disparity of power right. there. And that is as it should be. My job as guest number two at a party is to serve the, the role of what is happening here. And so we were discussing the scene and the director wanted me to stand up. And Hugh Laurie said, oh, no, I don't think that would work at all. And so I sat back down and he took another breath and went, I am so sorry. That was completely inappropriate of both of us. What do you think you would like to do? Wow. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, just a, I'm just a movable lighting instrument right now. You don't have to apologize to me. But he just in front of God and everybody, he just was like, stopped himself <clears throat> took it back and went what i need doesn't matter because i'm not playing this role what do you need that is generous that, so, and, and yeah. that's so generous yes that's yes. that and, and that, that that stands out uh it, it, with actors that you work with their generosity yeah they're also um the other story about that episode is that there was because we were all it was a big episode and um and so we were all together for a lot of it. And I got to watch a lot of it be shot and a lot of it. And there was a young man who was so talented. And I really thought I was hot shit because, you know, I was I was off a Disney Channel show. So I, yeah. I made a point of going to this young man and telling yeah. them that I really, I really thought he was talented. And, you know, I knew it meant a lot to him when I told him that he had a future in this industry. And I'm I'm sure he kept he kept going. Because of the words I, I gave Lynn Manuel Miranda. He didn't fucking need me. <laughs> but, he, but yes, I cornered him with like, you're such a talented young man. And he was like, thank you, crazy lady. I'm going to go win some awards now. Yes. Well, let me ask you about one other uh, performer. Mm -hmm. And you can tell us about Brianna Buckmaster. I like, I don't know. You want me to text her again right now? Please, that's, that's put her right. on speakerphone. We'll, <laughs> we'll talk to her too. Yeah. I think one of my favorite stuff. questions to ask when I'm interviewing or doing a QA and a or doing a panel is who is the most famous person in your phone? And could you go ahead and call them and put them on speakerphone and let us all say hi? But. No. <laughs> I have zero, I have zero famous people on my, my phone. I have, um, so the last conversation we had was last night. Was that last night? Yeah, 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 yeah. And for and those of you who aren't, aren't aware of her name, this is the actress who plays Donna Haskam Donna. on yes. Supernatural. So last night at 7.19 p.m. Um, and we were talking about the difference between external success and internal success and why is it still painful when other people get what we want 
even if our hearts are becoming what we know we want them to be because of what we have. That's super and deep. That was, well, that's our, this is, this is my brain. I've, I've learned hey, as an neurodivergent, I, I am not capable of like, well, let's see. But yeah, so we were having a long conversation about, um, what, cause we still talk, you know, they, they gave us, they gave us a spinoff, right? Yeah, they wrote yeah. a show for us. And I haven't worked since. Oh. And that's painful. Uh, and again, in case you're, you're new to the supernatural family, it was called a backdoor pilot, uh, wayward sisters was the title yeah. of the episode. Yeah. And it was meant to be a backdoor pilot. I think the very first backdoor pilot ever was in Make Room for Daddy, late 50s, early 60s. They did an episode where Danny Williams and family get pulled over in Mayberry and meet Sheriff Andy Taylor. So yeah. that that was when I, I think that was the first backdoor spinoff. But the two of you Work together on several yes. episodes. Oh yeah, and yeah. You're yeah. now doing. Are you now doing a podcast together? Well, we did a podcast. It was much easier when she lived in in Los Angeles, um, and when I had time because my daughter was at school. So, um, so hi. Now we're making smart mm -hmm. choices, right? You may come <laughs> hello, but I'd like you to be respectful and polite. Mm -hmm. That's Doug. Here, come look. You can see this is Doug and this is Keisha. And there are people I, who are watching down below. Do you want to come in and say hi? I you think we have somebody hi. behind the scenes with a picture of you and Brianna. I don't know if uh, they're listening and they can. Hello. <laughs> there she is. That's hi. Tabby. Hi. That's my daughter. Hi. Nice to meet you. She That's says, nice. Cool. Oh, can you hear? <laughs> How can you hear? I've got headphones in. I'm really loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's reading your lips. I, I, I oh, don't have an nice. inside voice. Do you want to hear it? Okay. <laughs> when I finish it up, I'll be in in just a little bit, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tabby. Yeah. Tabby. Tabby? Show them to me. Uh, no. Right now we're talking about what they want to talk about. That's my job right now. Oh. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm back. Sorry. But that was a great, that was a great break the mood. Um, yes. Yeah, so Brianna and I, um, are super tight. She's one of my dearest friends. I am proud that she's my business partner and, uh, Oh, the podcast. No, we're not doing the podcast right now. It's on a hiatus. We loved doing it, but it was much easier to do when we were in proximity. Um, and I had time to edit everything. So it's, it's, it's right now it's a little tougher because, um, I don't have spare time. We aren't in the same location and, uh, Tabby, daddy's working on a, he's working on a class. What's happening? Oh, it's all, it's all, it's all going. It's all going. I'm starting to tear my skin off. La, 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 la. All right. Let's not. Yes. So yes. Uh, um, that is why the podcast is on a break right now. Um, I think it was a good podcast. I had a lot of fun doing it. I enjoy listening to it, but um, it's it's taking a break. We have a question yeah. from Cassie TL. So oh, I've had, oh. I'm going to listen to that. I just, to follow, to finish up, she does have, a, she has a connection called the Joan Club and you can find it through her Instagram. So Brianna Buckmaster has the Joan Club, which is kind of like a, a it's a discord version of the podcast. So she does do that. So if you're looking for more awesome. um, um, content, yeah. she's got that. And I am mom on TikTok occasionally. So there we go. All right. Cassie TL says, had a long time question, which Cass, Another World or Cass SBN is your favorite? That's are I are you asking? Can you can I ask a follow up question? Are you asking Kim or the characters? Because I worked a lot more with Steven Schnetzer. I I really had a, we had a fun dynamic and we got to evolve and create and just we we really he was a great mentor and kind soul on that on that show and we had a lot of fun working together. I've only been in one scene with, Ka I mean, Cass and Jody only did one scene ever, 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 ever. So I don't, I don't 
know him as well. Like when you're on a soap opera, you are there 16 right. hours with no daylight. It is, <laughs> it is boot camp. Um, and, and that, so I would just say, cause I know Steven better. I, I know him and I love him. And that was like an actual intimate working relationship. Whereas Nisha is lovely, but I barely know him better than y'all do. Wow. So I actually, ha he is the most famous person in my phone, Nisha Collins. There you go. <laughs> so I do, he does a thing every year, a couple times a year called Gish, like Gishers. And he has, um, he has a mailing list that he will actually like message you on your birthday and stuff like that and say, happy birthday. And uh, you go out and you do all of these things to raise different funds and stuff like that for different things. And uh, it's the Gish community. And I do that. So technically, he's in my phone. Um, do I know him personally? No. But he seems super sweet. I just bought his book of poetry. He just came out with a book of poetry recently. And since me and my best friend... Um, she is obsessed with supernatural. She actually said to say hi, Kim. So hi from Heather. <laughs> hi, Heather. <laughs> um, so she was going to try to make it today, but she is going through radiation for her cancer. And uh, wow. so she she said that um, if I got the chance to say hi for her, because she loves the show. And every time something comes out with somebody from the show, she buys it for me. So she bought me <laughs> the book of poetry and I've been reading it and I was like, Gosh, I love all these people. So, uh, well, oh, wait. With, with, I have with, a note that says to please remind everyone that this is the multiverse fundraiser. Fundraiser, by the fun. way. Um, speaking yes. of beautiful souls oh. who deserve to be on this planet, and we are moving into making like a community of humans who remember that we can share. We have. One of the best ways I remember that I have an abundant life is weirdly by giving, is by thinking, I need, I need, I need, I need. But when I share, what I receive is energy and love and expansion. And then look, I'm still okay. And now somebody else is okay. So um, this, this right now, what we are doing is benefiting Val Valerie. How do I say her last name? It, she um, goes with Perrine or Perrine. She, she she answers to both. We I I asked her that before because I had seen two different magazine articles. One was titled Perrine is Queen, and the other said the Divine Miss Perrine. So I had to ask her before we did the interview, which one is it? She said it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, there we go. She, I, she's not attached. She's to probably how like you she's got she's she has got some bigger mountains that she's climbing right now than how. Yeah. You say her name, and I admire that. But uh, oh, that yeah. is what the the donation link is down here at the bottom of the screen, right. and that is what these funds are going for is to help her with her. And any bit helps. So even if you can just yes. you know give a couple dollars here and there, and if you do, you get entered in to win a ton. There's a ton of prizes. A I think lot, there's like forty some lot. odd prizes. And if you donate or share or anything like that, the <laughs> show, um, yes, these are some of the products that you can win they were all donated from different people some from our group uh some from friends and stuff like that so cool yeah. yes <laughs> yeah so quick 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 shout out to what we're actually doing here yes yes yeah. well we 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 spoke about misha for a little bit uh shep mark shepherd was at a convention a local convention here recently and of course, he spoke about how everybody just tormented Misha. Obviously, you were not part of that. But something else he brought up, uh, I believe Mr. Shepard, uh, Jim Beaver, Felicia Day have all said that they were hired for the show as like a one and done. They were just going to come in, do one episode, and suddenly it all blew up. Was that your experience as well? 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, I was just there. It was another, it was actually another incident where the casting director brought me in because they needed an extreme level of emotion. And they knew, and they knew I would show up with that. 
um, because for those who don't know, my very first episode uh, involved my son eating my husband's intestines and then needing to be shot in the head. It was very dramatic to watch, so just, by the uh, way. So, so just a normal Thursday, right? Yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> as you do. Um, and, uh, and yes, and then ending with everyone I know and love being burned on a funeral pyre. So eh, there was stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. And zombies kind of in between. Emotional. Zombies in between. So, um, so I just, and then when they called me to come back, I was very confused. I thought they'd gotten something wrong, but they were like, no, we need a cop to facilitate this particular uh, storyline. It just makes it easier. It's like, oh, okay. And then they uh, called but me I again. loved your character, so thank you for call coming oh, yeah. back. That's I loved <laughs> I loved coming back, but it wasn't until probably six years before I kept thinking they were bringing me back to kill me. Oh. Like it took me. I was like, yeah. "Am I am I dying? This can I see this?" <laughs> In fact, there was one episode with Mark Shepard where there was no mention of whether or not I lived through the incident, and I kept saying, "I was like." No, I can't because I'm dead. <laughs> like, you're not dead. Like, it doesn't say that anywhere in the script. <laughs> Nowhere in the script does it no. say that Tony lived through the date. <laughs> and it was a blind date with Mark Shepard in that I episode. No, that, that was it. She was done. She was like, no more, no more demons. No more demons. <laughs> mm. Lauren's asking if you have a favorite Sweet Life guest star that you worked with. Was there a guest star that stood out? Yeah. My friend Ray Porter, I mean, Bob Torty, um, obviously because he played the dad, but n this is just, that's a, this is a cheating answer. But the episode, Dad's Back, where um, the whole band of, of is on the thing, and then there's, I think his name was Derek. He had long, he had hair a bit like this, only it was a little longer. And he was, <laughs> at one point he was taking a nap, cuddling a roast chicken. Um, he was very sounds like a good nap. <laughs> yeah, he was very, very funny. But he's actually one of my best friends and has been since I was 19. He was in my wedding. Um, you would also know him if you happen to be a fan of the Snyder Cut uh, as the voice of Darkseid. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. So that is that is Ray Porter, one of my one of yeah. my dearest, closest friends who who got to come play with us on mm -hmm. on Sweet Life. And uh, Sheriff Jody Mills showed up, like we said before, in uh, season five. Mm -hmm. And from what I read and from what I watched, since I've been a fan for the whole 15-year excursion, that you appeared in every season, every succeeding season after that. Six, seven, yes. eight, nine, ten. Yes. That? Like once. But yes, I showed but. up every day. They were, they were like, yes, indeed. I think I was there every single season after that. That's that's amazing. That's it's wonderful. And I lived so, I lived through all of it. <laughs> I have to ask, please. Uh -huh. Okay, so did you ever meet Felicia Day in person? I don't oh, remember yes. if you were in. So I have what I call my crush card. Oh um, yeah, and yeah. look who's on it. <laughs> no, she's she's a gazillion percent, absolutely hundred percent. Yes. Um, we do, this is the great thing about the convention circuit is that I get to know people that I would, like Ruth Connell is one of my dearest mm -hmm. friends and we've never been on screen right. together. So the convention circuit, Sam Smith, well, Sam and I have been friends since before Supernatural existed, but you know, getting to see each other at conventions really fosters a relationship. And so <laughs> Felicia and I have been on, um, on stage together and been at conventions together. And I've been on her podcast and um, I think we are very much, and my husband photographed her. We did a, we did a calendar one year of the SPN women and my husband did most of the photography for it. So we definitely, our circles overlap and she is scrumptious as, <laughs> as an eclair uh, made by fairies. She is on my crush card. So, I mean, yep. <laughs> of course she's yeah. scrumptious. Yeah. Um, so, is that your hall pass card as well? Is that is that what we're talking about? Uh, no. So, oh, okay. Uh, well, you know, it's. But, but my husband is on that. That's my husband right down here. Oh, okay. That's kind. That's nice had, that he's in That is. Head. So, uh, no, but like, uh, I actually. Um, 
huge nerd if you guys didn't know that. And so I used to watch her, um, oh my gosh, what was her web series called? My brain is not functioning right now. But I watched her and they played basically WoW, World of Warcraft, and they had this whole um, geeky show and I was obsessed with it like 100% because it was my life back then. And uh, so then I started, you know, watching her and everything else. And it just, I fell down that rabbit hole. Yeah, no, <laughs> she's a juggernaut. She is a juggernaut. And I, I really right. like her. Is there one, one of the questions I'll, I'll usually ask, but I'm going to, I'm going to modify it for you. But one of the questions I usually ask is, was there a role you auditioned for or was there a role that you were offered that you didn't get that you wish you could go back and have another shot at? Oh, that's very specific. Have another shot at. So in the well, case, uh, you know, could that, that you I would be able to to play that role. Was was there a oh, role oh, you that offered that you? So so for me there's a trip like if I had another shot at it that's the that's that's saying is there something you think you should have done differently? Oh no 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 yes. that's never yeah but is there so 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 the question you're asking is is there something that I if didn't pass on that I have a regret on or right. that I passed on? Right. I have never I've passed on one role in my life. And it the character was a girlfriend in an action movie who only existed so the bad guy had somebody to rape, so you saw how bad the bad guy was. And uh, then she just sat around whining. <clears throat> and I was like, Yeah, I would have passed too. Yeah. Um, other than that, I love people that are like, Well, how do you choose the roles you get? I'm like, they fucking offer it to me. <laughs> I don't have that kind of power. I don't have that power. I don't have the ability to like. <laughs> You know what I think I'm gonna do next is someone call The Walking Dead. I don't know why I haven't done that yet, but I think I should go beyond that. So I don't have that capacity. Um, <laughs> uh, it would be pretty sweet if you did, though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> tell them. Don't tell me. <laughs> okay. Me. So I'm gonna I'm going to uh, message the producer later and just be like, Hey, yeah. you know who you should really put on? That's right. <laughs> it is not. I am telling you, absolutely. Why am I not there? Um, <laughs> But uh, but no, I will tell you a story. I screen tested for the Vulcan role on Enterprise. Oh, um, because oh. of my because of my work from uh, Voyager, uh, Rick Berman and Brandon Braga, and because Kate Mulgrew, I'm I'm telling stories out of tale story t school now. But Kate Mulgrew actually messaged them and told them to get me on wow. the show. She wow. was like, "This kid's got it." grab a hold of her, she would be an asset. That's so amazing. they pulled me in to do, if you know me, you know my feelings come out of my eyes. So don't get upset when I start crying. I just cry about everything. That's all right. That's oh all no, right. it's okay. Feelings are so, valid. So go for they, it. Um, so they pulled me in and I, I auditioned in front of, I, I screen tested. Was, so that means I was at Paramount with like 15 executives in the room. And Rick Berman and Brandon Braga had already talked to me and they've said like, here's, and I'm not going to share the secrets, but here are the secrets of what a Vulcan is. And oh. here is why we want you to play a Vulcan. And I will not share those secrets until the day okay. I die, but they answer a lot of questions. Oh. And I went in and I did it. And then I went from there to my agent's office and um, just for something else. And I happened to be in my agent's office when they called. And wow. uh, he picked up the phone and he was like, oh yeah, hi. And he was like, <laughs> I was like, uh-huh. And then he goes, what do you mean wrong physical type? <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. And he hung up and he looked at me and I said, I was too fat. And he said, you were too <laughs> ugly. Hmm. Do you want me to what slap him? Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay. Thing. Yep. But that? it's not that was it was that was their words. That's how this fucking industry works. Yeah. And then, um, but let's fast forward to look at who they hired. She is yeah. a fucking knockout. 
<laughs> yeah. He is like there is not a set of eyes on this earth that could no. look at that human being and be like, eh, I mean, <laughs> and that's what they wanted. And here's the thing in this industry, no producers have to settle. Producers right. never have to settle for less than what they want. Because they literally have a and lineup was, of everybody throwing themselves yeah. at them. Right. And I was less than what they wanted. Oh. So, well, we all think happened. you're beautiful, Kim. Well, yeah. Well, thank you. And that was a great, what ended up happening is that I took a year off. I was like, that one hurt so badly, I have to leave. So I went oh, away yeah. and I did Shakespeare in Oregon for a year. And I had some amazing experiences. And I had to, you know, like, everybody's got to have one of those that <laughs> sets the bar for what hurts and what am I willing to overcome? And that's, that's my bar. Like yeah. everybody has a story. Yeah. Everybody has a story like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Or you just go, that one knocked me on my ass. Yeah. So if I can yeah. get back up after that, I get back up for me, not for them. Yeah. Yeah. I was doing summer stock theater in, uh, as a young man in my twenties, the early seventies. And the casting director brought me into his office and said, Doug, I really want to use you, but you're not pretty enough to be a leading man. You're not ugly enough to be a character actor. You're too damn big to be a juvenile. I want to use you. I just don't know where the hell to put you. And I said, you know, make me the heavy. So I played the heavy for ever, for two years. I played the heavy in everything. But, you know, just being told you're not pretty enough. You're not ugly enough. You're not, you know, you're not small enough. You're not big enough. And it's not with malice. They're just, that's their business. That's it that. Is, it is very hard. Like you hear, I hear all the time. It's not personal. And they truly believe it's not personal. An actor is a product. Right. I am selling a product. And the portion of me that goes in their brain is a product. So how do I separate my soul and right. my heart, which is what I'm actually yeah. putting out right. from the product that they see and receive. And I don't know. It's just, it's just, it, some days it's easy and some days it's hard. Right. There's a question across the bottom of the screen from a curious idealist. What are the weirdest fan interactions Kim has had? I would say probably at one of the conventions, I would think. You know what? So here's here's the thing. I'm weird. And join the club. Yeah. <laughs> I love and joy and overflowing emotion sometimes manifests as choices that are not considered social norms, but they come from love. And so when I see a person in front of me behaving in a way that might not be a social standard, yeah, don't see weird. I see love. Yeah. I see excitement. I see desire. And I see a vulnerability. I have never had a weird interaction with oh, this that's that's out, that's outstanding. I love and, you, and now I just want to like meet you in person because then I want you to gauge <laughs> me because everybody is like, is, mm. <laughs> we're, we're huggers. We're all huggers. Yes. And so many people will use the term fanboy or fangirl as a derogatory statement, but you see them as just pure excitement and love coming at you. I can't. I mean, I relate. I got to meet Neil Gaiman once wow. and I, I, I was it was the most he hugged me and all I remember is that I had so much sweat on the back of my neck it must have been a profoundly uncomfortable experience for him and he was so kind but I was so like oh this is this is this is more than my than I can contain this is so much um I am a fan when something inspires me and and <laughs> makes me feel <clears throat> the parts of me I love, when something connects me with my own me that makes me like me, I love that person. And yeah. I am irreverent and 
uncontained in my love. So I feel like I have the honor of triggering that in other people. My job is to not take it personally. My job is not to be like, that's right, sweetie. I'm fucking hot and my shit. (laughs) Uh, First of all, you are. So yes, yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, but, but you seem like such a genuine person and I love everything about that. Thank you. I'm learning. I'm learning. I spent a lot of my life masking because I felt that your needs mattered more than mine because that's how I had to be safe is to make you feel good or like me or whatever mm-hmm. else it was. I'm neurodivergent. So I feel that 100%. And so now at this point in my life, I'm learning to just be like, the best I can give you is honesty. And then know that however you respond to that is yours. That's yours. That's not, that's not mine, either good or bad. Or let me even rephrase that. I don't need to moralize faith, either comfortable or uncomfortable. Well, uh, oh. curious idealist just uh, rephrased his question. Okay. What are some fan interactions that stood out to you the most? I Do think that one? that would be that would be. <clears throat> you know what? The ones that stand out to me are the people who are clearly. They all stand out to me. They all stand out to me. And in the moment, every single interaction is my world. I am 100% about the interaction in the moment. But the ones that resonate with me the most are the ones where someone's love has had to overcome a fear that is so clear. There are some people who are so frightened of my reaction or speaking in public or that they're going to get it wrong or that this is their chance and they're going to miss it or that level of fear I live with every single fucking day of my life. And so when someone has said, I am terrified to do this and I'm going to do it anyway as an act of love to myself and to express my love to this person, Mm -hmm. that's really when I'm just like, yes. Good, for, because that yeah. inspires me to yeah. keep making love louder than my own fear. I, I'm a retired elementary school teacher. I taught elementary school for 32 years. Oh, how perfect! <laughs> and one of the things I would tell some of my little kids, the Rugrats were, were on TV at the time. And I would say, you know who's the bravest person on that show? Chucky. Because Chucky is scared spitless of everything and does it anyway. Just... Right? Uh, embraces it yes courage is your own bar sometimes yeah. it is courageous to keep breathing you know we, we have true. this weird illusion that courage means a lack of fear and that's absolutely untrue without fear there can be no courage right right a lack of fear generally means a, a, a you know arrogance yeah yeah uh my modified role question is yeah. If if gender and age were not a factor, is there a role in Supernatural? Is there a character in Supernatural that you would have loved to play beyond besides Jody? But or is that or is there one that you felt that you were more attracted to? Not more attracted. Jody's my everything. Jody's yeah. my world. Jody's my Jody's my me. Um, but I had so much fun playing Jody possessed for a brief period of time. Oh. I really would have, and I, I really, I really would have liked to have played Lucifer for a little bit Ooh. just to see the, de- the delight, just the delicious revelry in abundant pain. Oh. Well, playing the antagonist, playing the bad fun. guy is so, so enjoyable. It's so much fun playing. I the really, bad I mean, guy. I got to do that on Criminal Minds. Yes. On Criminal Minds, I really was kind of the Dolores Umbridge of the BAU, and that was <laughs> Dolores is my daughter's name. So you guys shared the same name for a while. Slytherin. <laughs> <laughs> also Slytherin. It was, it was yep. yeah. So you're right. Playing the it's it's hard. It was the hardest I've ever had to work in my life because 
it's it's very you know a powerful being doesn't let their power dissipate and right. i'm very like i just spit it out all over and so learning to contain that but yeah i think it would have been it would have been fun to play evil with integrity because so right. often evil is played like i'm the bad guy and i'm going to yeah. lose um and mark pellegrino played it with oh. such just lugubrious lusciousness just right uh, so committed to knowing he was right. Right. And he also played played it several times where you felt sympathy, you felt empathy for the Lucifer character. Hello. Yeah. He was a fine Hi, angel. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, Hi. So um popping in here again. Um you know, maybe, maybe a minute or two earlier than I would have if Kim wasn't so awesome. I had to be on screen at the same time as her. <laughs> That's true. I feel that 100% yeah. crazy. <laughs> oh, we appreciate you being here with us so much. I have a few more details about the giveaway as the fundraising chair of the Multiverse Fundraiser. I'm going to brag on myself for a second. Got it. All right. So to make sure, I know everyone is giving just out of the goodness of their heart. Valerie deserves all of our support. But I want to make sure everybody has a chance who is eligible to actually make sure that they get put in that drawing. So when you donate using the link that's been scrolling at the bottom of the screen, GoFundMe will send you a receipt. I need you to forward that receipt to Phoenix, P-H-O-E-N-I-X, SIS, S-I-S, cosplay c-o-s-p-l-a-y at gmail.com if you're listening to an audio only recording of this later the link is tinyurl.com slash m v f r two two we tried to make it short easy simple yep. um that extra step is because this money is going directly to valerie and her caregivers so we can't see it unless you send it to us. Um, we are not handling any of this money. It's all going straight to her caregivers. And we really want to make sure that we get you in for that giveaway. We had artists from around the United States, maybe around the world. We had so many donors contribute their like hard work to us. And we want to make sure that everybody knows we appreciate them and that they... Uh, Everybody who donates gets a chance to win some of those amazing prizes. We have 40 prizes. And every time you donate, you get another chance put in the hat. Is that correct? Every so $10. That you can add this. If you oh, got the I'm money, you can say, add this. Just a dollar by dollar. Do it. $10 <laughs> by $10. Just $10 by $10. Right. Yeah. To okay. every ten dollars so if you donate fifty dollars you get five entries um kim do you I have any so uh <laughs> keisha i have you're, high you're hopes always a winner. Life, okay <laughs> you're yes. always a winner in my book love this all right kim do you have a parting story for us a piece of advice something funny um i want you to close the show the way you want to close your segment of this show oh and I also as a side yeah. You are welcome on our show anytime. Like, Absolutely. Literally, if you ever want to come back, we I would mean, all love to have you. Oh, thank yes. you. I love being here. It's, I, it's, I, I appreciate I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. Because again, like I said, one of the most affirming things I can do to remind myself of my life's abundance is to be generous with it. And every single time I give of myself and my willingness and and say yes, um, because I'm a scared little person too. And the no is very loud in my brain because I equate no with being safe. Nice. And so coming here and being given the opportunity to say yes and give is actually a blessing to me because it reminds oh. me of just how full and abundant my own life is. So thank you for that. We Aww. love you. We do, seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank do you I just for, hear Thank now? you for, for doing this and joining us. Thank you for sharing the stories. We love you. We look forward to seeing anything and everything you do from now on. Which thank I you promise you, much. it will be a lot. It will be. You are amazing. 
<laughs> I am happy. And so as everything unfolds, it unfolds as it is supposed to. All right. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Thanks, Keisha and Doug, for interviewing the amazing Ms. Rhodes here. And uh, we are going to bring on our next panelist now. The Multiverse Fundraiser is a benefit for Oscar-nominated actress Valerie Perrine. Ms. Perrine is known for her roles in Superman, Slaughterhouse-Five, Lenny, and so many more. We've teamed up with documentary director Stacey Souther to raise money for Valerie's medical expenses and other needs. Every donation and every post share gives you the chance to win super prizes. Go to the website listed for details.